On March 30th, 2022, GoPro released firmware version 1.40 for the Hero 10. Firmware version 1.40 includes new features, performance improvements, and usability improvements. In this video, I'm going to summarize those improvements and tell you what I have noticed after installing the firmware update. So in the new features category, firmware version 1.40 has one main one. And the one new feature is the addition of support for Volta. If you don't know what Volta is, this is a brand new product from GoPro, and I'm actually in the process of testing it out right now. I'm gonna have a video entirely dedicated to that to tell you all about it and what my experience with it has been. In the performance improvements category, GoPro has several things that are bundled with firmware version 1.40. The first is improving the quick capture performance and reliability. I've not had any problems with quick capture after installing this firmware update. Granted, it's only been a couple days, but so far with the multiple times I've tested it, I've not had any issues. So that's positive to see. The next item under the performance improvements category is improving the auto upload connection to GoPro Cloud. So if you subscribe to the GoPro Cloud service and you upload your footage, you may have noticed that that connection was a little bit buggy at times or wasn't always the fastest. The GoPro Cloud service is something GoPro has been pushing hard and they've been offering a lot of great deals on that, including promotions when you buy their new cameras, you often can get a steep discount if you're a GoPro subscriber. So I like to see that GoPro is improving upon that. I honestly don't upload a lot of my footage to the cloud. I do have the service, but a lot of times I'm just taking this directly from the camera to the computer but it is nice to have that feature and to have it work reliably. That way I have a backup in case something happens to this camera before I get it to my computer. Now, so far testing that cloud service, I didn't really have a lot of problems before. Previously, it seemed to work fine for me. And so far after updating the firmware, I've not had any issues. So that also is a positive. Again, it's only been a couple days, but so far so good. The next performance improvement is improving hindsight capture for 4K 25 frames per second mode. I don't use hindsight capture a lot, and I don't usually use 25 frames per second. Since I'm in the United States, I typically use 24, 30, or 60 frames per second. And then of course, 120 frames per second if I'm doing 4K slow-mo. So I hadn't noticed any problems with that, and that's probably because it was specific to the 4K 25 mode. But if you were noticing problems with that, firmware version 1.40 should fix that for you. The next performance improvement is the real half-speed button response when doing a time warp capture. So if you've done a lot of time warps on the Hero 10, you may have noticed that sometimes when you hit that button to go to real speed or half speed, sometimes it doesn't always respond right away. So that is something I had noticed in the past. I don't do a lot of time warping, but when I do, that's been a little bit annoying. So, so far after I've tested it with firmware version 1.40, that is a lot better. The button does respond each time, every time. So that's also a true positive to see. And the final performance improvement is improving the reliability when multiple BLE devices are paired to the camera. So I feel like this is maybe one of those issues that was isolated to people that maybe had a remote and a phone paired to their GoPro at the same time. There could have been some type of conflict there that GoPro addressed but I typically only use my phone as a remote with the camera. I don't use a standalone remote. In the final category of usability improvements, there are four different improvements that GoPro specifies here. The first is addressing an audio calibration issue when the GoPro Hero 10 is connected to the media mod. So if you've used the media mod before and used the microphone on it, you may have noticed an issue where the audio is not perfectly calibrated. I've noticed this sometimes, it seems to be a little bit off, or there seems to be a delay there. So, so far, when I've been running this in the media mod, I've not had any issues with the mic since then. And I've also tested it with the external mic as well, connected to the 3.5 millimeter jack. Not had any problems there either, which is great. And by the way, on that note, when you're updating the firmware on your GoPro, I definitely recommend not having it connected to the media mount. Uh, with firmware version 1.30, Several of you reported some issues after updating it with it connected to the media mod. So when you update to firmware 1.40, definitely recommend just having the camera. Uh, don't have it plugged into anything and don't have it in the media mod. I think that's gonna give you the best experience. If you do happen to update it in the media mod and you have issues, I recommend that you downgrade the firmware, disconnect it from the media mod, and then upgrade again without the media mod connected. The second usability improvement is fixing issues where the audio meter may not always show when your camera is connected to the media mod. 
I've not ever had this issue of the audio meter not displaying. It's always displayed for me just fine. But if you have seen that issue, firmware 1.4 should fix that for you. And I did test that after it being the firmware. So far, so good. The audio meter is still there like it normally was, no problems. The third usability improvement fixes an incorrect scheduled capture countdown when connected to an HDMI monitor. This is a very specific issue with a very specific use case. I think most of you, myself included, probably did not have an issue with this because I'm guessing most of you, including myself, were not using this connected to an HDMI display with a scheduled capture countdown. But if you were doing so, I definitely recommend updating to firmware 1.4 as this should address that issue for you now. And finally, the fourth usability improvement is that famous general bug fixes and user interface improvements. And I suspect there are a lot of little things bundled under that that we just don't know about that GoPro has not divulged the details on. I wish they would because I personally love to know every little detail of what the firmware is fixing or improving. I want to know exactly what that firmware includes. But my advice to you is if you were experiencing a problem on firmware version 1.30, and you update to 1.4, check if that problem's still there or see if 1.4 addressed that issue for you. I'm glad to see that GoPro is continuing to offer firmware updates and improvements. And it sounds like there's a lot of innovation to come from GoPro in the year 2022, whether that be through firmware updates, new products like the Volta that I'm testing right now, and even new cameras. There are new cameras coming from GoPro later this year, and I am excited to see those. And yes, I did say cameras. There are going to be several of them by the sounds. It sounds like maybe four. If you haven't seen my video on how to update firmware in your GoPro, I've linked to it above. It's really helpful. It shows you both methods for doing so, including the method through the Quick App and then the manual method as well, in case the Quick App doesn't work for you. Until we talk again, happy GoProing.